Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson. This lesson is on the signs and symptoms of appendicitis. But before we get into the signs and symptoms, I want to briefly introduce what appendicitis is and what causes it. So appendicitis is a condition involving inflammation of the appendix. So the word appendicitis, itis means inflammation, and the prefix appendis refers to the appendix. So it's inflammation of the appendix. And appendicitis is caused by an obstruction of the opening to the appendix. So if we look in this image here, here is the gastrointestinal system. Here is the small intestines, and they eventually lead into the large intestine. Now, the first part of the large intestine is where the appendix is located. The appendix juts off of the first portion of the large intestine. And what happens is there's some kind of obstruction that blocks the opening to the appendix, causing inflammation and enlargement of the appendix. Some things that could be blocking the opening include an appendicolith, which is a stone. So that stone can block the appendiceal lumen. So that stone is often formed from firm feces and some other minerals. And some other causes that could be blocking that opening include malignancy. And there are some cases of appendicitis where the obstructive cause is not known. Now what happens is when that appendiceal lumen is blocked, bacteria within the appendix get trapped in the appendix and they start to proliferate and multiply and this leads to inflammation and enlargement of the appendix. What is the epidemiology of appendicitis? Well, the mean age of onset is 20 years of age and males slightly outnumber females. Now before I get into the signs and symptoms of appendicitis, I need to briefly introduce abdominal anatomy. So here is the patient's abdomen and normally the patient's abdomen is split up into four quadrants in order to better describe the location where pain might be occurring. So the patient's belly button is the midpoint, that is the umbilicus, with a horizontal line and a vertical line. So there's four quadrants. In this image, we're looking straight at the patient. So this is the patient's right side, and this is the patient's left side. So this is the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, and left lower quadrant. And the right lower quadrant is where the appendix is located. So the appendix is located in the right lower quadrant. More specifically, it's located at a point known as McBurney's point. So this is where in a majority of patients, the appendix is located. Now, in order to find this point, your clinician will feel for what is called the anterior superior iliac spine. You don't have to worry about exactly what that is, but that is the uppermost protrusion of your hip bone. They'll feel for that. And then they will draw an imaginary line from that point to your embolicus or your belly button. And it's one third the distance from your anterior superior iliac spine to your belly button. That is the location of the appendix in most patients. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. Symptoms are often acute and present within 24 hours. So symptoms occur quite rapidly with appendicitis. First is abdominal pain. Very important to note is that the abdominal pain in appendicitis is initially vague and generalized periembolical pain. So it occurs right around in this area here, and it's vague. Patient can't quite pinpoint where the pain is located. They just know it's in this general area. Now, this is what we call a visceral pain. It's a pain that is vague and is not able to be localized specifically. This pain, this vague, generalized periembolical pain, lasts for four to six hours on average. And then the next key feature to note here is that as the condition progresses, as the appendicitis becomes worse, the pain becomes more focal and it localizes to the right lower quadrant. So this pain is then what we refer to as somatic pain. So if we look in this image here, as this appendix becomes more and more inflamed and more and more enlarged, it starts to push up against things inside the abdomen. So the pain becomes more focal and localized. The patient's able to note exactly where the pain is. And this pattern of having a generalized periembolical pain for several hours and a migration of that pain toward the right lower quadrant and then having a more focal localized pain in the right lower quadrant is the most important discriminating feature of appendicitis. So individuals who have that particular pattern of symptoms are highly likely to have appendicitis. There are some associated clinical signs and symptoms that can also be noted with appendicitis. So clinicians will often test for these signs and symptoms. One of them is right lower quadrant pain when the left lower quadrant is palpated. 
So if a clinician pushes on the left lower quadrant and the patient feels pain at McBurney's point in the right lower quadrant, that is known as Rav Singh sign, and that is suggestive of peritoneal irritation. And then the other sign that clinicians may use is when there's pain elicited in the right lower quadrant at McBurney's point when the patient coughs. That is known as Dumphy sign. So some of these may be assessed by your clinician. But again, what's important to note, the most important thing to note with regards to appendicitis is this pattern of pain sensation and migration. Generalized periambilical pain that migrates and becomes more focal and localized in the right lower quadrant at McBurney's point in most patients. So very key. Some other signs and symptoms of appendicitis include anorexia. So this is a loss or reduced appetite. This occurs early, around the time of periambilical pain. And it may be secondary to pain. So what we note is that anorexia and that generalized periambilical pain are some of the first signs and symptoms that occur with appendicitis. And it affects a majority of patients. Approximately 75% of patients with appendicitis will report anorexia or a loss of appetite. Another symptom of appendicitis is nausea and vomiting. This is due to right lower quadrant pain, and it occurs after the onset of pain. If nausea and vomiting occurs before the onset of pain, before the onset of that generalized periambilical pain, this suggests another condition. So it's more likely that the nausea and vomiting occurs after the onset of pain. Patients with appendicitis can also have fever and chills. This is due to inflammation of the appendix, and more specifically, bacterial proliferation within the appendix. And it may also be due to perforation of the appendix. So if the appendicitis goes on for too long and it becomes more and more enlarged and inflamed, it is at risk for being perforated, for essentially rupturing. And it usually occurs after 48 hours of onset of appendicitis. And you can imagine that if you have a rupture of the appendix, you're going to have a spilling of bacteria and some other fecal contents that is going to lead to an infection. Diarrhea is also another possible symptom of appendicitis. It's watery stool, but it only occurs in 10 to 20% of patients, so less likely that patients with appendicitis will have diarrhea. Some other signs and symptoms of appendicitis include malaise. Malaise is a generalized feeling of being unwell that can be common in appendicitis. And then another sign or symptom that can occur in appendicitis is urinary frequency and urgency. So urinary urgency and frequency is feeling like you need to urinate more often, so that's an increased frequency of urination, and feeling like you have to urinate more quickly, so you have an urge to urinate. You might be wondering why this happens. So here is a diagram of the gastrointestinal system. So again, we're looking straight at the patient, and here's the right side of the patient, here's the left side of the patient, here's the appendix right here in the right lower quadrant that juts off of the large intestine. And here's the bladder. The bladder is in front of the gastrointestinal system. What can happen though is if the appendix becomes enlarged and inflamed, it can start to push on the bladder. So the enlarged appendix can start to push on the bladder and cause irritation of the bladder. It can make the patient feel like they have to urinate. So that irritation, that pushing on the bladder can make them feel like they have to urinate more frequently and feel like they have to urinate more urgently. So that is the reason why you can see urinary frequency and urgency in appendicitis. This is similar to the mechanism we describe in diverticulitis. And these signs and symptoms of urinary urgency and frequency are similar to what we might see in a urinary tract infection, but it's not going to be mistaken for a urinary tract infection because you're going to see all those other symptoms we talked about before, especially that pattern of pain, location, sensation, and migration of the pain. So that's very key with regards to appendicitis. If you want more information on appendicitis, please check out my in-depth overview of appendicitis. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.